Hi guys, I hope that you're doing well and that you're keeping safe and hopeful at this particular time. I know that for most of us, this has been quite a challenge, having to stay indoors and sometimes having to rush uh, so that you are able to be in time home for uh, before curfew. And uh, I want to encourage you that you are not alone and uh, we are praying and hopeful that God will actually bring an end to this situation. My family is well and we are grateful to God for that. I thought that I get to share a few insights from the Word of God to encourage us and uh, to encourage our faith at this particular time. You are not alone. You are facing this with many other people and God is right there with you to help you overcome it. Who would have thought that a time would come where I would be facing a circumstance that would be overwhelming even to the strongest and wisest nations on earth? Who would have thought that some of these mighty nations would come to a point where they are expressing their own helplessness against this situation? In fact, Italy, which has one of the best uh, hospitals in, the, in Europe, uh, was getting to confess that the hospital that uh, is in that category is quite overwhelmed even at the moment. What does this leave, or where does this leave us as the African and the third world nations? Most of us are probably feeling if this circumstance has overwhelmed the developed nations and is putting them in a trap, how much more we who are in the third world, who do not have the prowess, the development, and probably the scientific uh, research to the extent that is needed to deal with this. But the truth is, that they who have that are also in a challenge. And the question is, who will rescue us? The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 18 says, Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. From the King James, New King James Version. Now, the Bible provides us a great basis for our hope. And today I want to talk about what happens when wisdom fails. Now, the Bible gives us two kinds of fools. One is a fool who has said in his heart that there is no God, according to Psalms 14.1. And the Bible tells us that this person who says that there is no God is a fool. This kind of foolishness that the Bible talks about is a foolishness that is based on a feeling that we have all the information, that we have all the knowledge that we need, and we have everything that it takes to be able to survive on earth by ourselves and by our own wisdom. And today, we find that many of us are locked up in this kind of uh, foolishness and especially uh, in some of the brightest people, in some of the brightest uh, scientists that we have had because they feel that they can do it and they have capacity to go on without God. And this is the kind of foolishness that God is against, the kind of foolishness that God refuses. This foolishness uh, is the assumption that we have answers for everything, that we have answers for anything that we face in this life. And the truth is, that is not true. And this is the highest point of wisdom, which God tells us that before him, it is foolishness, according to 1 Corinthians 3.19, which says, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. Now you and I know that the more we insist we are wise and can handle the situation by ourselves, the more the situation proves us otherwise. And hence the words of the scripture that he catches the wise in their own craftiness. Now there's another kind of uh, foolishness that God encourages or another kind of being a fool that the word of God encourages. Now, no one wants to be 
a fool and especially on April Fool's Day. Now, that may probably be the only way in which we can overcome the situation in which we are today. It says, let him become a fool that he may become wise. God is saying that one key way of us becoming wise is accepting to be fools. What kind of fool am I talking about in this second instance? I'm talking about a fool that can accept that they don't have the answers to everything. A fool that says or accepts that they are limited and not unlimited. A person who accepts that they are dependent and not independent. Now, the worst kind of foolishness that we are facing today is that of feeling that I can do all things, that I have the capacity to do everything and to face any situation by my wisdom and by my strength. But God is saying that he who chooses to accept that they are not in control of everything is a person who is on their path to becoming wise. And hence he says, let him become a fool so that he can become wise. Now this is the kind of fool that we are encouraged to be and especially in these times that we are facing. Now, this kind of fool that the scripture is talking about that God wants us to become is the one that says that I don't know how to do this. I am in a fix. I am not able to handle the situation I'm going through. And I need something, some power out of myself, outside of myself, to help me deal with this situation. This kind of being a fool is the one that says, I am at my wit's end, that I don't have any more wisdom, I do not have any more strength or ability or power to face this situation. Friends, we are faced by a circumstance that has led every other nation running for help that has made every other nation desire a solution and in fact and in fact for most of us when we hear some of these nations express that helplessness we find ourselves also depressed and stressed and confused now the scriptures help us know why this kind of being a fool is encouraged in the scriptures. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and I'll read, it says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was placed through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand miraculous signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified as trembling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those uh, whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. Brothers, think of what you are when you are called. Not many of you are wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God is helping us to understand that it is true that he has given us wisdom. That we are able to do research. That we are able to use our knowledge and our ability to solve some of the world's problems. But what happens 
when our wisdom fails? What happens when science no longer gives us answers and especially as fast as we want them? When wisdom fails, when our wisdom fails, then it is time for us to acknowledge that God is the ultimate source of wisdom. And the kind of being a fool God is calling us to is that one of saying, God, I need your help. I need your help that the power that I need to overcome this challenge is only found in the gospel. It is only found in God. And so as I conclude, I want to encourage you during this time to know that even if our research is being challenged by this problem, even if our wisdom, which is still from God, is challenged by this problem, that we can still look to God Father for wisdom. The book of James chapter 1 tells us, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask and it will be given. And so I encourage you to pray for our leaders, for our scientists, that God will give them additional wisdom so that we can see this problem behind us. And keep praying for yourself, your family, your loved one, and our friends, so that, and uh, even our nation, so that God will solve this problem for us, because only Him can. God bless you so much, and continue being hopeful.